put it right back. Every family in Jamaica has a story of its own, even if they share a lot in common with other families throughout the country. Today, we are at the Lewis's at their present home near Mary Brown's Corner in St. Andrew. Here lives Miss Pinky. What's her real name? What difference does it make? Pinky is what they call her, Miss Pinky. Janet Lor Lorraine Moore, uh -huh. and we are now on Maryvale Avenue in Kingston 8, and we are going to speak with my grandmother, who is 100 years old. What's her name? S.L. Amanda Lewis. Okay. All right, let's, let's go inside then. Huh? Okay. We'll follow you? Okay. Okay, good. Uh. This is my grandmother. She's 100 years old. And um, she lives here with my mom, mm -hmm. Ina Brown, that is sitting directly behind her. Yep. And all these persons here are her children, grandchildren, great grand, and great great grandchildren. Okay. All right. Uh, what do you call her? Well, for me, I call her Mama, mm -hmm. even though she's my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And there are persons who call her Aunt Pink, Miss Pinky and her children call her mama and many of the grandchildren call her mama as well you can call her aunt pink or pinky miss uh, <laughs> <laughs> pinky was born in saint mary saint mary what part of saint mary i'm thinking the part of saint mary and saint andrew paisley who paisley district paisley district uh -huh. what were your parents doing what was your father doing and your mother cultivating no, Plant, banana, yam, potato. Much of what they planted was sold to the nearby reformatory school. Everything they, 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 they planted, they sold to the reform no, school? No, they carried to the coronation market. Okay. Coronation market? Oh, they got the coronation market, that's painting. It was smelly. He used to transport all the, um, the food for the people yeah. that go to market. Yes. They used to travel every day, different different times, you know, yeah. starting from Monday to Friday. Yeah. We, the, 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 the kids, used to transport the food to the bus line or to the truck line. Yeah, you, you too? Yeah. What's your name, sir? My name is Peter Lewis. Uh -huh. And you were what? The, uh... um, her son. Which son? Yeah. Only one son she had? No, it's four sons. Yeah. But I'm the second one. Second son? Yeah. Where you went to school, Miss Pinky? Unity. Unity Basic School or Elementary School? Elementary. What a teacher in school? I teach me every little thing. Like what? I teach me to count, teach me to read and write and do every little thing otherwise. Yeah. And the school was <coughs> near to your home? No, three miles. So what, you had to walk it or, or what? I have, to, I have to run run in the morning, three miles. Uh -huh. <laughs> Running. Sometimes I get company, sometimes I'm gone before. Yes. Then how early you had to get up in the morning? Sometimes five o'clock. Why so early? To have to tie out goat and big and such they like. Uh -huh. You were running in shoes or barefooted? Barefoot, bare feet. Mm -hmm. Although the, 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 um, the shoes were cheap, uh -huh. nobody couldn't buy it, <laughs> buy them. So you had to care for the shoes? Right. Yeah. Care running them? Miss Pinky was one of four children. I had one sister, and she used to have bad mind for me. Uh, she uh, my mother bored me in town. Amen. Why, why your mother boarded you out? I told her, I'd, I, she asked me what trade I would like. And I told her dressmaking, and she couldn't get nobody in the country. And she come to town, brought me in town, and board me out down here. Miss Pinky was boarded out to a lady named Myers and began to learn to sew. Mrs. Myers had a school? No, she never had no direct school, but she took in children. Uh -huh. So what you learn on a machine, or you use needle and thread? Learn on the machine. Miss Pinky's mother sent food up from the country every week as part payment for the sewing lessons. She got banana, yam, and 
sweet potato and such the like. Every week? Weekly. What did Miss Pinky learn from Mrs. Myers? But she wasn't learning me nothing. <laughs> oh, you mean she wasn't learning you nothing? She waited until I had gone, gone anywhere, and then she cut out the work. And when I came now, everything finalized. She only gave me the fractal to him, mm-hmm. and the buttonhole <laughs> to show, yeah. and nothing else. Miss Pinky stayed at Mrs. Myers' boarding house until she was around 16, 17, maybe 18. Put it at 18 then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so what, what you did with yourself when you left the boarding house, Miss Pinky? Go went back home mm. to my mother. And what you did when you went back home? She bought my foot machine. Uh-huh. And yep. then I was using it, yeah. making dresses and Little boy suit uh-huh. and dresses, little children dresses, and big people as well. Yes. So you had plenty of people come to you to ask you to make things for them? I didn't take a lot because they, they wouldn't pay me. How do you mean they wouldn't pay you? Every time they come, they say, next week, Friday, when my when we, when we husband get paid. I they... have to walk up and down uh-huh. on Sundays. Yes. And ask them for the money. They don't have it. Because they're not their, their husband not getting a pay yet and all that, that difference. So I just back it up mm-hmm. and sell the machine. Oh. <laughs> How much you sell the machine for? Fourteen pounds. Fourteen pounds. Uh, and you gave up sewing? You stopped sewing then or what? I got to cultivating. Sweet potato, yeah. yam, yam pea. Yeah. Banana. Hill and Gully Ride is at the present home of the Lewises, near Mary Brown's Corner in St. Andrew. And they're talking about their particular story, the story of the Lewis family, whose matriarch is Miss Pinky, or Aunt Pinky. Was there a young man in your life? Your boyfriend at that time? No, at that time I didn't have any boyfriend. She fell in love with our dad at that time. Can you remember about your courtship with Mula Lewis? He was into a shop at Crossroad. I'm saying love me. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just so? And he take me to my mother. Okay. And say I'm asking me. Go oh, ask you. Uh-huh. And your mother consent? Yes, my mother and my father consent. What your husband was doing for work? Serving a shop. Thunder began to roll and it looked like rain. All right, whose shop was it? Corporal Smelly. Who was Corporal Smelly? He was my cousin. But he was a policeman? No. Then why you call him Corporal? That's his name. Miss Pinky, tell me when you were born. When? When's your birthday? Me? The 15th of August, 1911. 1911? What are your earliest memories of your father? He, he loved all his children. Uh-huh. He never, my mother was the one that beat us. Uh-huh. Not him, he don't touch, he said, don't touch my children. Really? Mm-hmm. He always look after us, he always yeah. make some big dumpling for us. Uh-huh. Mm, and we like that very much. Mm-hmm. Chocha and herring. Then we used to boil the chocha and squeeze it out, you know? Uh-huh. And mix it with the rundown with mackerel or herring. Yeah. You know, and all these things. And it feed we well, man. Yes. Breadfruit, banana, and all these things, you know? Yes. Yam, you know? And pea soup. Yes. Always go out on a Friday night and when they kill the cow, he always come home and make lovely beef soup Saturday morning. Yes. They go to the market, Coronation Market, on a Thursday and Friday and sell the goods and come back on Saturday evening. Yes. He used to have a donkey yeah. and she always pad that donkey with the, with the amper full of food mm-hmm. and come to Canson Spring yeah. and then take the tram to Kingstown. And then we have to take the donkey back to walk and take the donkey back to Paisley District. Yes. 
And she would take the tram down to and Paris. And she did, yes. And walk across the Coronation Market. That's it. So where the food would be in the meantime now that she took the She take the tram with the food. So they put, she put the food on the tram? Yes. How she manage? Well. By herself? The yeah. usual of uncard people that draw the food, pick the food for you after you come off the truck. They have the hand cart and the hand cart boys took the, 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 the load to in the market for them and put them at the spot where they know they sell. Mm -hmm. She would go from Thursday and come back on <coughs> Saturday. They sleep same place in the market. Thursday, Friday, Saturday? Mm -hmm. yes. Where in Carnation Market you used to sleep? Betwixt the load, betwixt the baggage. She, she put them together and she get in the middle right. and that's how she stay for the night. Mm -hmm. But it must have been very uncomfortable. Very. <laughs> what, she, what, what she would sleep on? Sometimes they, they would have a um, crocus bag or box or a cardboard mm -hmm. and they put it down there uh -huh. and sleep. Yes. Mm. Then thieves never came and took oh, the yeah, stuff. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. Oh mm. yes. Tell him about yeah, it. Sure. I don't mean, know them, they just sleep and gone. All tomato. Them come and pull them empty baskets. When I wake up, I see the empty basket. Then nobody saw them doing this? They, they don't say nothing, they can't say nothing. They stone them. They walk with them stone and whatever. The thieves? Mm. If you talk, they stone you. Just yeah. like whatever you was going now. Mm -hmm. okay. In those days, how much you sell tomato and the potato and yeah. so? Sometimes mm. we sell it in the basin. The price? Penny a penny a basin. Okay. And chopins. Then it gets scarce. Did you make much money selling in the market? Not much, but I was satisfied what to get. Mm -hmm. And to mouth. When you're in the market, how you eat when you get hungry? Them, them have food, them, 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 them cook. People cook in the market and sell. There was ladies in the market cooking, mm -hmm. like how you see them on the roadside cooking now, and then they would buy the food from the ladies. You know? Okay. Exactly. A cup of tea, a cup of, a cup of mini corn, and uh, all those things. Yes. So when she finished now and set off everything in the market, she would come home? She buy up things come home. Like what? Fresh fish, sprat, bread, Everything. sugar, Skin, you yeah. name it. It's like when you go to a supermarket when she come home mm -hmm. <coughs> on a Sunday. So she would carry all these things in the tram car? No, man. The no chuck. The chuck. There was a chuck come. Uh -huh. Take them from Kingston to Bada, right? And we used to go and meet her at the bus terminus and help her to take the things in. Yeah, where is Border? That's a... Uh, um, Border St. Mary and St. Andrew. Yeah, you leave her and stuff and going up. That's Royal St. Andrew. Yes. Mm -hmm. She has got eight children. I'm the first. Uh -huh. And um, she grows up because our father was like a sickly man in the last, last part of it. And um, what was wrong with him? He had um, epileptic fits, uh -huh. so he couldn't go out as he likes. And um, she was the backbone of the family, mm -hmm. worked very hard, and that's why we are here to congratulate her. So when she get home now with the fish and all that, mm -hmm. what would happen? We put down the things until morning, mm -hmm. Sunday morning. I was the eldest yeah. of, the, of the family, children. So I was the one that do the cooking. I cook, I scale the fish, and we used to put it on the zinc to dry. And then we fry fish, rice and gungu. Yeah, that's our Sunday dinner. And sometimes we have mutton, goat meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I used to cook four pounds of rice and two quarts of green peas and I could hardly take it off the fire because the fire side was high. Yes. So I, what I do, I hook my foot in the, in, the, in, the, 
in the ground, and then I hey, oh, when I lift the pot up. <laughs> and um, I put it on the, on the, we call it dresser, yeah. right? In, in the kitchen. kitchen, yeah. Call it dresser. And then now I would share for everybody, right? We used to call our father Poopa. So we, yes. So we take out Poopa food first. Yeah. Now round in the plate. And those days, what we used to do, we put the salting, we used to call the salting on top of the rice. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's in mackerel and all that? Uh, no, man. Fresh fish, man. That's Sunday dinner we had that, but you know. Okay. So we don't eat mackerel on Sunday. We eat fresh fish or beef or, or mutton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then now, I share out with all the other children. Yeah. Okay? And we had a whole uncle there who used to live with us. And we used to share out his dinner as well. You see, mother's brother? Or no, my father. Father, brother. Father, brother, yeah. Uncle mm -hmm. Uncle who? His name was Uncle Nunes. Nunes. Mm -hmm. Nunes. Nunes. You're watching Hill and Gully Ride, and we are at the present home of the Lewises on Maryvale Avenue near Mary Brown's Corner in St. Andrew listening to their family story. And you're about to hear about Uncle Nunsi. Nunsi. His right name was Stephen, but we call him Uncle Nunsi. Uncle Nunsi. Some people thought Uncle was retarded. That man was stronger than anybody in the district. Nunsi? Yeah, man, when him, when him, when him cut a bungalow grass, you, none of us, strong as we is, can shake it. And him just tumble it over his head when, him, when you see him go on. When him a walk, you know. Feel him foot not bend, brisk. you know, him just. Very brisk. You know? <laughs> so people think he handicapped, but he wasn't. He was a very strong man. Stronger than any one of that group. Mm -hmm. You know? And, but him but him used to be slight. Me? Thin, slim? No, slight, you know, in, in, in his ways. Simple. I, I mean. Simple. 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 When you say to him, say, Uncle Nuns, you got any girlfriend? No, she me no want no woman. You have any kids? He said, yes. She said, how much kids you got? He said, me got two kids. When he said, Patty Moss and you female. <laughs> but none of us never seen six, 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 or six, know six. those kids. Patty Moss and you female. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so that may have been in his mind. Yes, <laughs> yes just in his mind. <laughs> so as far as you know, you was a bachelor? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I've never seen him with that. But I never think that man ever go to a woman from the day born until he die. Oh, yeah. When a man cut a bungalow wood yes. and put it on his head and bring it home and throw it down, you can't shake it. You know? Mm -hmm. And that I think him died at 81 years old. Yes. And he cut the wood them so neat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, very neat. Each wood just link to one another. Mm -hmm. And it tied so neat. And he put it on his head. Uh -huh. And then he bring it home. Yes. So we are wood to, to cook to cook never, our food. Never, never out of wood. Mm -hmm. That was his job. Mm -hmm. Cutting wood and grass, you and know. Grass. So yeah. he was a very useful member of the family. Yes. 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 And you, you were happy to have him in the home. He was a very yeah. good uncle. Mm -hmm. He was a what? Very good uncle to us. Yes. yes. He used to after we have our dinner at night. He used to, every night he used to put on another pot and cook for us. Uh -huh, what? Food. You could cook to them? Yes, yeah, he could. Yeah, man. Pork cook. and dumpling mm. and, and yam. And banabees. And call us out. If we even gone to bed, he called us out and give us food. Yes. What did you say, banabees? Yeah, banabees. What is that? It's a peas. It's a bean. It's a bean. Yeah. So mm. after you have your regular dinner, he would put on a pot again? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Uncle Nunes out there broke wood. I would say, Uncle! Oi! Ya cook? Yes, man. And we are cook? Pork and yam. And we're not going to sleep until we get that pork and yam. Yes. Yeah, we sit there and we wait and we, we say all kind of foolishness. We sit down and we chat and we sing and chant, waiting at the food. He used to call my sister Bakra. Bakra! Why? The food ready. Because, because she feared all the rest. Yes. <laughs> okay. We used to sing Sankeys. Hark, my soul, it is the Lord. Tis thy Savior heard his word. Jesus, speak and speak to me. 
Save the sinner, love it, me. Thank you. That's yes. a nice hymn. Mm -hmm. So all of you used to go to church together? Yes, we used yes. to go to Sunday schools. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. How about church? Regular Ch church? It's the same church. We go to church, at, but we call it, we go Sunday school in the mornings and then we attend church after. You take Uncle Nunsi with you? No. no. Why? Uncle Nunsi is not coming, coming out. Uncle Why? Nunsi, Uncle Nunsi wasn't a, a religious person. He don't go to church. He is just, he is just a man that grew up and just doing thing. Mm -hmm. You know? So he wasn't a religious. Not my father wasn't religious. Your father didn't go either? No. Uh -huh. He wasn't a religious person. Yes. What about your mother then? She was. She was a um, choir and playing organ, you know. Oh, well, of course, yes. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. but but those guys, they were believing in the church and all these things. They just grew up and um, do their thing, mm -hmm. you know. Your father was a good shoemaker. Yeah, and a good mattress maker, too. Yes? Mm. Yes. He used to make shoes for any of you? Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he used to make hard boots, we used to call it for all the... They, they demand them in the district that go to bush, you know, mm -hmm. all the hard boots, big hard boots. And him used to send, we go buy him, um, him ribbit and him leather and him, you know, yes. and him razam and, and polish and, polish and everything. Uh -huh. And when we, and him, and him, because right. those days they didn't have machine to stitch shoes, you know, him used to pour so and, with and sew mm -hmm. with him hand. Oh, with his hand, sorry. Yeah, yes. hand so, mm -hmm. you know. Handmade shoes. Handmade shoes those days, you know. But he used to be a good shoemaker and a very good mattress maker. Uh -huh. What do you put in the mattress? Straw? Kaya. Kaya. Kaya? kaya? Yeah. That's that, that was those, those, those kaya days. Coconut, yeah. Mm, kaya. And people would buy mattresses from him? Yeah, they give him harder. Uh -huh. They had a mattress and make it. Yeah. Yes. If you want him to make one, yeah. he come to your house and do it. Yeah. yeah. And he fix scale as well. Shop people yes. that have scale. Yes. Anything go wrong with it, they take it to him and he fix them. And the, the bottom, sometimes the bottom of the scale right now leave the top. Yes. And he make a bottom. And if the, the horns is, um come out, he scribe, he scribe back all the horns is in it. Thing like that, you know? Yes. So he was a, he was a handyman. He was a good handyman. Yeah. You know, but sickness mess him up. Yes. Epilepsy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I didn't see why it is down. Same why it is down. Mm. What did he look like? You say he was a good-looking guy. What? What? Well, like me. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> only that. Only that. He, uh, only that. He was a bit stouter than mm -hmm. me, yes. and a little bit clearer than me. Uh huh. But he, yeah, man, he was a handsome guy. He never, he never used to dress funny. Pure black suit he used to wear, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You never see him on the street funny. Yes. They, he don't wear jeans and khaki and all these things. Every time you see him on the street, black suit and yeah. him white shirt. Yeah, man, he go go drink him rum at night time. Uh huh. Bad. Mm. But know? that's not good for your epilepsy. That's before, that, that's before, right? before, that, that's before he was before sick. That time he was a young, strong man in him, you know, like in his 30s up to 40s. Yes. He was a gambler. What, what he used to gamble with? Mm. Bone dice and, and, and card packs and pick up your. Bone dice mm -hmm. and card what? Card packs. Card. card. You know when you play card? I know the three card men. No, no, not, not that, that poker. one. Poker. 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 You used to call it poker in those days. Poker 21 and... Um, pick a pole. Uh, but pick a pole is a Chinese thing, no? Yes. Yeah, but then you also buy it. You to come to and buy it. And sometimes you win big bucks. Oh, yeah? And you could see him coming out with a bag of flour, a bag of rice. And we were all jumping and screaming out in because it's enough big food are coming in. We were happy. <laughs> You've been listening to the family story of the Lewises. The present home is at Maryvale Avenue, near Mary Brown's Corner in St. Andrew. And their matriarch is known to everyone as Miss Pinky. You've been hearing about the story of Bulla Lewis, who was Miss Pinky's husband and the father of the family. And next week, we'll pick up 
with some more tales of Bulla Lewis. Until then, we are flying up the hill. <laughs> Thank you for watching Hill and Gully Bride. We're still at the present home of the Lewises on Maryvale Avenue near Mary Brown's Corner in St. Andrew, presided over by the matriarch of the family, Miss Pinky. And we've been listening to stories about Bulla Lewis, Miss Pinky's husband and the father of the family. Bulla Lewis was, among other things, a shoemaker and a gambling man. And sometimes he would come home after winning big bucks or come carrying a big bag of flour as part of his winnings, and the family would be overjoyed. But Miss Pinky would soon spend it all off or give it away. My mother could be the richest woman in Jamaica. Yes. Give but but she give away everything, everything to people, to other people. So when your father win all that flour and what that had to pick up out, she give it away? Yes. Give Most it of it anyhow. Yeah. Share it. Mm. Share, share it. Share it. Share. Mm -hmm. She give Miss Lizzie two pounds, give Miss Nen two pounds, Miss Hardy two pounds, mm -hmm. and in, in a few minutes she finished. <laughs> <laughs> And send and send back to the shop. Oh, trust. No, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the truth, you know. And, uh, yeah. And sometimes when she send me to this woman, Miss Mercy, say, go and tell Miss Mercy, send two pound of sugar for me and tell so and so. When you go to Miss Mercy, tell her I think me can, me can, me not make no sale yet, so me can send, me can give her. So she said, she always said to me, if Miss Marissa not give you, go to Miss Alati. And we go to Miss Alati, Miss Alati give away everything. Yes. You understand? Yes. Because... I trust you. And then I she pay, pay. Weekend. weekend when she come from town. Me see my mother have one shilling. And Miss Nen asks her, send to her and says, send the shilling for Len. And she send the shilling for Len, Miss Nen. Mm -hmm. And when... She, we come back, she now have no money. And she said, we got your food. Because she gave away fair she was supposed to use to buy food. Yes. So that's how she is. Mm -hmm. You know, just give away. Mm -hmm. I used to take her up to country every Sunday. Which country? Same place up in St. Andrew. Uh -huh. We got we got a home up there you now. Yeah. As well, our home. Yeah. And I used to take her up there and she would spend a week and come back. You see when I land here, they say, Jesus come. So we sit down there with our purse and every little boy, come here boy. You and she Jim squeeze in the purse and take out and give this one one dollar. And everybody come to the yard. Man in arm pink. Come here boy. You know? And give. So that says she give away everything that she had. Yes. My father died from nineteen fifty five, so you know it's it's a long time. Mm -hmm. So when she doing these things, my father wasn't there. Yes, yes. He's on the wee round her. Yes. And we can't tell her don't do it. Mm -hmm. Because she said, if we said to her, I said, don't do it. She said, boy, I'm here give away, you know, God will bless me. When I give, the Lord provide for me. Mm -hmm. The Lewis family had special memories of their father, Bulla Lewis, especially during the August holidays. Every August morning, a, a pig always, Slaughter. If my father is there and he hasn't got no, no money to go and buy some salt fish or mackerel, he kill a pig uh -huh. mm. and cook and give us to eat. And the balance, we can it, and then can it. We can it and put it in a, put it in a liquor. You know them first time keg where they used to have rum in? They wouldn't one, keg. Yes. Yeah. And then can the balance of pork and put it in there and we eat hockey and can pork and breadfruit, man. 
you know, yeah. for weeks going down because it's a whole pig, you know, so it served long. Yes. I used to live with my grandma when which, my mother went to England. Which, which grandmother? Did you um, um, Ethel. That's your mother's mother? Yes. Mm -hmm. So when my mom, Ina, went to, to England to live, I stayed with grandma. And she used to operate a little grocery shop. Um, and they had a, one of those um, brick oven. Mm -hmm. So she used to bake stuff like ginger nut and all sorts of breads and stuff and sell in the shop. But everybody in the district used to come and trust everything. Yeah. So although grandma is putting these things in, she don't have any money because she, she, she trusts everybody the things. Mm -hmm. she's, cause she's always feeling sorry for people. But there's one very interesting thing I remember. I think it was the flora rains. I don't remember the year. But there was a lot of rain. And used to, she used to have a lot of pigs and, and goats and things. And the pigs were stuck in the mud. Mm -hmm. Be because you had um, landslides. And that time I was about maybe eight or so. Yeah. And we had to go out there, me and my other auntie who is not here, go out there with grandma to dig the pigs out the mud. Mm -hmm. And then grandma said, come, we're going to put them in the oven. And we are there saying, you, you but okay she's going to cook them. <laughs> but when she light the oven and put the pigs in there, they, they got better and started and people were wondering how come all those pigs survive. So that, yeah. that stuck in my mind um, and I will always remember it. So the, the oven just warmed them then? It warmed yes. them. She just lit it enough to just warm them up. But I, I remember digging those pigs out of the mud and taking them one by one to put in that little brick in that brick oven. But those were very good days for me. Yeah, why? Because I, I have such fun memories of having fun, even though it was hard work. And plus, Grandma spoiled me mm -hmm. because I live with um, her and her younger children who are not here right now. Yeah. When they go out in the, all over the place, I used to tag along. Mm -hmm. And then when we come back now, Grandma beat them. Mm -hmm. And I don't get any beaten because she says, you carrying the baby astray. Yeah. So, so I remember her very fondly and, um, you know, I just, and for that I love country life. Yes. So those, I, I, I keep remembering the country life. The family life. We, yes, the, the family life. Mm -hmm. We went to school very regular. Mm -hmm. Zion, basic <laughs> school. Um, Be regular. The, very regular because oh, regular. the children before, I guess they had to work in the fields and so. We did some work too, you know, but not as bad as they got it, yeah. you know, because they, they, they had to work some days and didn't go to school, right? Yeah, yeah. but we, we got to go to school every day. You're watching Hill and Gully Ride, and we are at the home of the Lewises, Maryvale Avenue, near Mary Brown's Corner in St. Andrew listening to the family story of the Lewises, presided over by their matriarch, Miss Pinky, who is now 100 years old. We used to go to school in the morning, four times, four days a week. Yes. Monday to Thursday. Thursday. Friday is load day. We got to go and load, draw out the food out the bush, mm -hmm. bring it to the truck line, for, to send to her to the market. You know? Yes. And I remember sometime we go to the market with her with uh, two, three bag of breadfruit. Mm -hmm. And because we used to have tons of breadfruit, you know? Yeah. And when she inside the market selling food, me go to the market gate with six breadfruit in my hand mm -hmm. and sell penny each. <laughs> you know? <laughs> six pence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and and when, when that six finished, me go in there again and Bring out six more mm -hmm. because it's plenty of breadfruit. Yeah. And them breadfruit, you know, where we are selling, is to buy salt thing. Yes. You know? As in fresh fish and mackerel and shad and all these things. Uh -huh. You know, to take back. Yes. And when we finish sell that now, we go out of the grass yard to and buy the sprat. This sprat and, and, and thing, you know? Yes. <laughs> so when we sell the breadfruit now, 
show the money in my pocket man, and run and out there and buy the thing, bring back, and she put that basket to take home. Yeah. You know? That's your mother? Yeah. Yeah. Many of the Lewis children went overseas to seek their fortune, as did many other Jamaicans. Who was the first to go? I was the first. What's your name? Ina. Ina what? Brown. Okay. I was Lewis, married Brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what didn't you have to go to England now? Tell me how Well, you... uh, everybody was going to England, everybody was going to England. From, from, from your district? Yes, all over the place. For me, I said, but everybody are going to England. We want to go to England too. Mm -hmm. So, I didn't have no money to go to England. And um, she said my grandfather left a piece of land for me. That's her dad. Who said? My mom. Said it. Mm -hmm. So I said, Boy, me say, Mama, me go country, me say, Mama, we want to go to England, you know. I mean, that me can't work land. So, you can't sell it and give me the money if you go to England. And she say, eh, hey, hey. And she sell it. Yes. And she gave me the money. And, um, well, I, I was married then and had my first daughter. Mm -hmm. She gave me the money, but the money wasn't enough. It was 75 pounds yes. and, and the boat. Yeah. And it wasn't enough. So my husband said, oh, then after that, the money can't carry you go to England. So what are you going to do? So I said, I don't know you know. So I said, I go to my father and I go borrow money and then the father will lend me money. So I said, make me go first because me have, you don't know nobody in England and um, me know somebody up there. So I said, go on then. That's your husband? Yeah. And I trusted him to go. Mm -hmm. And he went and he sent for me quick, 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 quick. You bought a ticket? Yeah, for 75 pounds on uh -huh. the boat. Uh -huh. So I tore. I, I spent 18 days on the sea, all, all over the place. Uh -huh. Italy, France, Spain, Madeira, all over. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I have a wonderful time that I was young and strong, very nice looking, but flowing hair. What kind of hair? Flowing hair. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, I went to England. I, I spent 14 years. Mm -hmm. So you went over by yourself on the boat? Yes, man. Yeah. And mm -hmm. your, your husband was waiting for you there? Waiting for me, yeah. He was there waiting for me. Yes. And um, What part of England? Where the boat landed? Southampton. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. First place I lived was Brixton Hill. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I moved from Brixton into Camberwell, and from Camberwell to Peckham. That's where they have the riot now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I do very well there. What kind of work you did in England? I do. Um, they, I don't know if you know what they, they call it. The first job was Artley's Jam Factory. Come on. Artley's. Artley's Jam Factory. Okay. Artley's. That's where they make jam fruits for, for Christmas cake and all those things. Mm -hmm. But those times the wages was very small. The first money I worked was five pounds. A week? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was tapa tapa pay too. What yeah. year was that? 1956. 1956. A lot of people in Jamaica were earning less than that. Mm -hmm. yes. And from there I went on to the clothing trade, which I was doing uh, what they call Hoffman pressing. I do skirts. You, you, skirts. You, you press them or you make them? Press them. Um, it's a steam presser. Uh -huh. You use your foot to press the steam. And you have a top there, you clamp it down. And it comes out nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The highest wages I, I, I work in London was um, 14 pounds. A week? Mm -hmm. That's plenty of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you were able to save money and all that? They mean I must. I save money, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then me, I, I come back. I'm here now for 40 years. In Jamaica? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. your husband and yourself had your own home in England? Yes, man. Mm -hmm. And three children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, your children grew up in England? Yes. Where are they now? Well, three, um, I bought them home. The eldest, the eldest one was eight. One was five, and one was one year and nine months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I brought them home, yes. and um, they are big people now. Yes. And my second daughter was born in England, and she said, she thanked me so much for bringing her home, because mm -hmm. she enjoyed here. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
You ever kept in touch with your mother back home in Jamaica? You ever send anything what for her? What are you talking her? about? I send money for her yeah. every single week. Uh -huh. When that money don't come out, that was the only thing that upset me. Uh -huh. When I can't get it because I left my daughter with her, and that upset me so much if I said to my husband, I said, go and post the money Friday evening. And he said, hey, you can't make a wait till it's Saturday. And I said, no more. Me want to go this yeah. evening, mm -hmm. Friday evening. She can't wash the pot and wait. Yeah. Yeah, man. I look after my mom. Yes. And I'm still looking after her. Yes. And no care, no matter what, I'm not leaving my mom. I'm not leaving her. I make up my mind to live with her until the day I die, mm -hmm. until the day she or me. You don't know which one to go first. But I want to be here for her. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who went up next to England now? <laughs> Merlin Ramsey. Merlin was a wizard, you know. A man I know, he was magic. a magician, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> so, uh, so am I. Yeah. You can work magic? Yes. That's why I'm here. You mean you make, make things disappear and all that? Of course. <laughs> <laughs>
they're born there, so it's their country, not mine, you know. I come from Jamaica. Yes. So they're born there, so they are right there. They are there still. Mm -hmm. Miss Pinky never went to England? Yes, she did. When she went to England? 1975. Who sent for her? I did. Why you sent for her? Because I want her to come and experience the country. And what happened? Give her a holiday. And what happened? She stayed for six months. Mm -hmm. What you did with her? Talk, eat, cook, take her all about, visit friends and family. You didn't make her go to look at Buckingham Palace? Of course she did. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And the changing of the guard and all Everything that. Everything she see. Yeah? She'll tell you. She go on the river? Yes, we take her on the riv river boat Thames. trip on the river. Thames? Mm -hmm. yeah. Miss Pinky, how you enjoyed it? I enjoy it. I, I enjoy myself well, well, well. It was nice. Mm -hmm. I went there 75. Yes. 1975. Here's one of Miss Pinky's granddaughters, Lunette Evans. My name is Lunette Evans. Yes. I went to England oh, to be with my mother and my father when I was nine years old. Okay. But when my mother left Jamaica, this beautiful, wonderful lady here was the person that looked after me. Mm -hmm. And that is why now I have something to say about her. <laughs> what, do have, what do you have to say about her? Well, I want to back up a little bit. My yes. cousin told you the story about when she had the stove. Yes, right? with the pigs and all that. Yes, but before she had the stove, me and my aunt used to have to go down the, bread, the, the, the bottom road every morning mm -hmm. to buy bread. Yeah. I was probably about seven years old. My, my aunt was nine. She's not here right now. Uh -huh. Her name is Daphne. Yeah. And um, Mama, we used to have to get up six o'clock in the morning, sweep the yard, go down the gully and fetch water. Right? And then we have to get ready to go down the bottom road to get bread for the shop. Yes. So now, we have to pass, there was like about three or four different little ridges that, like one named Hunter Ridge, uh -huh. that is related to my grandmother. So you had to pass Hunter Ridge? So we ridge? have to pass whether Hunter Ridge, any one of the ridge we could go down. Yeah. But the joke now is that um, along all of these ridge, Somebody died along all of the ridge, Somebody. and, and we, were we were afraid of ghosts. Somebody died on the ridge, eh? Yes, somebody would be just dead freshly and, dead and buried on Hunter Ridge. Yes. Or Mr. Barbers, or Mr. Mardi, the, the, the tailor. And we have to pass one of those ridge, yeah. not to count the dogs that was barking at us. Mm -hmm. You know, Tarzan, big, like um, one of those great, uh, great dames. Yeah and was barking at us, so me and my auntie used to walk side by side like that and look around yeah. to see what's going on. What time of day is that now? About five o'clock in the morning. Oh, yes. And any little rustling, we go <laughs> and we just start running. Yes. Because the thing is that, because she had the shop, my grandmother had the shop, mm. we could not go back home without getting that bread. We have to get the bread anyhow. We have to go get down by Bottom Road. Ghosts are no ghosts. Yeah, ghosts are no ghosts. We have to get the bread, yeah. right? Because if not, when we come back up, it's beaten. But my grandmother never beat me. Yeah. She never beat her grandchildren. Yeah. One day, my father took after me to beat me because he told me to do something. And I said, no, I'm not doing it. Yes. So he said, pick me a fiesty and you run me around the coconut tree and me take off to my grandmother because I know my grandmother would back me up. Yes. Right? So when I go out the yard, now I'm huffing and I'm puffing. And Mama said to me, Gyala, what, what wrong with you? She said, Mama, Mama, oh, Papa Ivana run me down for beat me, Ma. <laughs> she said, she said, then how are you doing now? Me said, never do nothing, Ma. But she, she didn't tell me to do something. I didn't do it, so I'm running me down to beat me. She said, all right, Gyala, all right. Don't worry. Um, go in the bed there so and wrap up yourself from head to foot. <laughs> and then by the time I do that, my dad was huffing and puffing coming around the corner. <laughs> and when he come, um, he said to my grandmother, Miss Pinky, you see that picnic come out here, ma? <laughs> and and, and um, my grandmother said, which picnic I talk about? <laughs> so he said, Merle, ma, because Merle is my pet name. Yes. So he said, so where you come, where you running our dog for? What she do? 
tell her if you do something, ma, she not do it. She tell me she not gonna do it. So me go beat her. Mm -hmm. He say, look, boy, come out of my yard and <laughs> leave me grand pick me alone. Get up, go home. So my grandmother always have my back. Yes. You see that? Yes. So that's why I love her so much. Yes. Well, Miss Pinky certainly spoiled her grandchildren, especially the one called Lunette. But there came a time when Lunette visited Miss Pinky and Miss Pinky did not recognize her in spite of all the spoiling that had taken place. We'll hear some more about that next week. And in the meantime, we'll once more take the trail uphill. <laughs> Thank you for watching Hill and Gully Bride. Every family in Jamaica has its own story. And when the respected mother or grandmother turns 100, all the children or grandchildren living overseas try to get back home to celebrate the occasion and to share their memories, the memories of their growing up years. Here's a granddaughter. My grandmother always had my back. Yes. When my mother was went to England, mm -hmm. there was a, about two weeks before I was due to go to England, I went to Bush with my, my aunt. To where? Bush! And wasting me in my eye. And I couldn't face my grandmother for two weeks because she said to my aunt when we were leaving to go to the bush, she said, no, make not, not to a picnic there because she had gone to England to her parents and me don't want, I want nothing to happen to her. Mm -hmm. So when I come back with the bee sting now, I swollen. I swollen, rub guava leaf and all kind of thing on it and it wouldn't go down. Every time she called me, I come to her, but I turn my back yeah, yeah. until eventually she said, I don't understand me not see her from so and so, you know, so many days. She, she called me and she said, come here, girl, I want to talk to you. So I had to go and face her. When I face her now, she see my eyes. She said, Lord Jesus Christ, and her hand on her head. I want me to tell Merlin I fancy. <laughs> <laughs> so then my hand ended up getting beaten from me because she said that she dragged me to the bush with her. Yes. You see? Yes. So she always on my side. That's Spoil why. You. Yes, she spoiled me. She never beat me. She always, or somebody else always get the blame for me. She has so much kindness and caring in her heart. She always put other people first. Yes. Not only me, but anybody that she encounters with. This is the reason why we're all here for her. We have to be here for her. We usually are here for her. We keep in touch with her constantly by phone when we're not here. Yes. Right? And we send money for her birthday, Christmas, or whenever she wants some. We never leave her out, and she always say, "Why well, me glad for me girl picnic day, me see." <laughs> so that is it. Yes. But there came a day when Lunette visited Miss Pinky, and Miss Pinky did not know who she was. I know when I came here, she wasn't so. She didn't quite know who I am. Mm -hmm. So she said, she looked at me so, and she said, ah, "Who are you again?" So Miss, this is Merle. She said, Lord Jesus Christ, girl, come here. She <laughs> said, you come? And I said, yes. She said, so you're Merlin's daughter? And I said, yes, mama, I'm Merlin's daughter. And every day, I've been in her room. And what Auntie Ina used to do, I took over serving her her food and her drink. I sweep up her room. I clean up her room for her. I help her to get dressed and undress. And I says, OK, fine. I, I feel happy within myself because I said, you know, all the time that I've been away, if I never had the chance to do it, she's going to be 100 years old, and I just feel good that I've done something for her because I love her, and it's all 
honest love. Yeah. She knows me well, you know, she yeah. knows my kids. My son, when he was about two years old, we came to um, visit her, and my son used to tip on his toe. Yeah, and, and she called him Tippy, she named him Tippy. Tippy too. Tippy, yes. And now when I come, she said, she always said to me, where, t where is Tippy? And I know, ex what Tippy there? And I know exactly who she's talking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why Tippy used to tip? Tippy used to tip because I don't know, you know, sir. He, he was afraid to put his foot down flat and his, his uh, flat on the ground. Prickle my stick him. Yes. So one day, Tippy there. Tippy Look at Tippy there. See him there? He's in the room. <laughs> Tippy is here? He's in the house. Tippy is here. Tippy. Tippy. Yes. I don't know why. In all, in all honesty, in all honesty, I don't know why I, I used to never want to put my foot down. But um, everybody in this room, at some point, all the elders that are older than me, used to force me to put my foot down. And whenever they used to do it, she would always say, "Leave the picnic alone. Him will put him foot down when him ready." <laughs> and I would always get that protection from her, no matter what. So throughout all of my years before the foot actually come down, yes, then would say, you know. Put your foot down, why? And I used to say, you know, I was afraid and, you know, me try to put the foot down and the foot wouldn't go down. And grandma used to say, leave the boy alone. Make him leave him. If him want tip, make him tip. <laughs> so she protect me all those years, you know? But Tiffy, what, as a big man now, why, <laughs> why you think you used to tip? I can't tell you. You just tip. Really and truly, there's no... And how come that you decide to put it down flat? Just a habit. Same. Because Antina threatened me with a, with a ruler. Yeah. This lady yeah. got him with a ruler. A she said, if you don't put it down, I'm going to beat you. Yeah. With a ruler. Yeah. She never beat him, but she just hold the ruler up on her, over her head. Yes. I migrated to Canada in 1980 when um, my parents moved from England. Yeah. I am here with my wife, Tenille. She's around the corner. And we're here to celebrate um, Mama's 100th um, birthday. So, I mean, she means the world to us. She means the world to the family. Yes. And um, she's basically the pillar of, of, of our family. Yes. So, and that's the reason we're here. Yes. Okay, where's your wife? She's around the corner here. I'm Mrs. Tippy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm Tenille Evans. Where you met Mr. Tippy? I met him in Toronto. Uh -huh. At, uh, at a nightclub, to be honest with you. He was dancing or tipping? <laughs> you know what? I think it was a bit of both, to be honest with you. It was a bit of I both. I started tipping to look at her. <laughs> yeah, a bit of both. Yes. Yes, he was a very handsome young man. Uh-huh. Yes. Still it runs in the family, as you can see. It's a beautiful family, so oh, yes. he's got good genes. Very good. Yeah. Very and good. there's many other grandchildren and great-grand and great-great-grand in the family and, and they're all here too. Oh, I'm Jean, the last one. So I just came as you can see and uh, my luggage leave at the airport uh, and the, and Canada. She was late coming to the house because she has some problems with her luggage at the airport. We are listening to the family story of the Lewis family and their matriarch, Miss Pinky. My mom taught me a lot. I get a lot of beaten though, but... <laughs> no, wait, no, your mom is who? Miss Pinky. Miss Pinky. Miss Pinky is your yeah. mother. Mm -hmm. yeah. What you get beaten from? Well, as my niece said, we get the beaten for them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? And, but one thing I can say, I learn a lot because of that beaten, because I learned to cook. Yes. Wash clean and make <laughs> ginger beer, bula, it's you know, all nine yard. Red, good red pea soup, you know, stuff like that. Ginger beer, toto, bula, the whole nine yard, ginger nut. Shall and it? I used to wash the lata for the toto and the bula when it bake. Yes. At the spring, spring side. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I learn a lot. I get a lot of beaten to learn to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but it paid off. And I'm happy for that, you know, because I can show off with my cooking because of my mom. So I'm happy to see my mom. Oh, so happy. <laughs> You look good. 100 years old. Here's another granddaughter. That's my daughter. Yes. Hi. Hello. Um, my name is Sonia. Uh huh. Grandma took care of us for the first, what? For about five years. Yes. While she, my mother went back to England. Mm -hmm. We have many memories. Um, she treated us as if we were her own children. Yeah. Probably about two years ago. Uh -huh. She got a cell phone. She wanted a mobile phone. And she sent her grandson, she gave him her money to go and buy a cell phone because 
she didn't want to use up her daughter's set her daughter's landline she wanted her own phone and so he had to go and buy a cell phone for her and he had to teach her how to do it and she used to make her calls to her various friends she made calls overseas calls uh -huh. and and she sent them to buy her credit. So when the credit finished, she gave them her money to go buy her credit mm -hmm. because she must be in contact with her people. So she's technologically savvy. Yes. We have to take the phones, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who buy the telephone for oh, my Mama. Was you? Yes. And I'm the one who started her off with the telephone business. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this is my children. I forget to introduce my family. Nadine, yep. Sean, Francis is my daughter-in-law. Tony is my son-in-law. And Winsom, my dad over there. And Terry is my next son-in-law over there. I am Winsom, her uh -huh. daughter, the oldest. I have my sister here. I have my daughter here, Sarah. And my son, Jacob. You guys come over, say hi. And I have another little guy, Andrew, who's out there playing with the dogs, because yes. he loves dogs. <laughs> Okay. And I have my brother Sean. So there's a Dean, Sean, and myself. And my other younger brother is still in Canada because he couldn't make it. So we're here because we all want to celebrate my beautiful grandmother's birthday. And of course, we have his lovely wife, Sean's wife, here as well. And my other handsome brother, my my sister's husband, standing here with us. And one more beautiful gentleman. See? So you see, from the one woman. She couldn't be any better. Yes. And because of her, we're all here, and we have everything yes. she gave us. Yes. And as a family, we're like this. We're like this. Hmm. And it's not just saying it, we really are like that. Yes. Well, you have someone else coming to the family, like all the in-laws, like my sister-in-law, my husband, and my brother-in-law. They come into the family, and they're automatically welcome because as a family, we treat everybody with respect because of her. So for well, that, from my heart, I couldn't be here and I couldn't be more happier. She makes me feel like the woman that's I am. She's a beautiful woman. Yes. I can talk about her all day long and I remember uh. everything she's taught me. I sat up with her till late at night at my uncle's shop. God bless his soul, he's dead today. I sat up with her late at night and served flour and sugar. She taught me. I never forgot it. I've left Jamaica since the age of 12. So everything everyone's talking about here, please take it lightly because you know what? It's from the heart because of that woman there. She used to run a shop with my, with my dad. I'm, I'm Ken Roy. Yeah. Papa, everybody know Papa from Kingston 13. Mm -hmm. Miss Pinky from Kingston 13. Everybody in Kingston 13 love this woman. Right? And she run that shop with my dad. And she give everybody, anybody come for trust, she trust them. So everybody love when Pinky there around. <laughs> Whenever she left going to the country, my father allowed her to take anything out of the shop and go with it. Yes. And he, you know again the care to the country and give it away and I wouldn't say anything. Grandma, I'm happy to see you live to see be a hundred. And I'm gonna live to be a hundred and one just like you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I could be what I wanted to be. I thought I could be the mighty big name, but I can't even walk. Without him holding my hand Can't even walk Without him holding my hand The mountain's too high And the valley's too wide Down on my knees Jesus, we just want to thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love to us, Lord. Bind us together as a family with cords that cannot be broken. Thank you, Lord. And so we leave Miss Pinky and the Lewis family on Maryvale Avenue near Mary Brown's Corner in Kingston.
Ooh. 